I'm going to give you an honest review of our 2021 four-wheel camper Raven. Stick around. Hi, I'm Tim from DB2 Overland, and this is my honest review of our 2021 Raven four-wheel camper. So I got my notes here. Um, we're sitting in a 2021 Raven four-wheel camper. Um, this is for uh, five and a half foot to uh, five foot, eight inch bed pickup truck. Ours currently is sitting on a 2018 Tundra. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the pros and cons of this four wheel camper. And uh, let's get started. Pros. I'm going to start off reading all my pros and then we'll go into the cons, the things that uh, we really don't like. The, the number one pro is this is a home on wheels. Love it. Wherever you go, you're home. We've got an outdoor shower, uh, hot and cold water. It's awesome. Uh, love being able to uh, get clean when I'm camping. So we have a 20 gallon fresh water tank and a five gallon hot water tank. It's perfect for our showers, perfect for uh, doing dishes and uh, washing your hands, whatever you need to do. So we have the largest refrigerator that you can get for a four wheel camper. It is 130 liters and we can put enough food in there for a five day trip. There's also a little freezer in there if you need that to keep your uh, meat frozen or something like that. We have a furnace. It's uh, propane and it runs off a thermostat. Works really well up until about uh, 32 degrees, but we'll get into that. Um, two 10 pound propane tanks. That is enough for the two of us to do our cooking and uh, run the heater if we need it. And also the propane runs our hot water heater. We have a stove. It's a two burner stove and it's recessed. And so is the sink. Uh, both recessed so that you can use the countertop as a full countertop and not have to uh, you know, move everything around. So we have a wide workspace up there. So the weight of this camper is uh, 1,040 pounds dry. Uh, we haven't done anything um, extra to the truck, any upgrades, other than we put airbags in it. Uh, that's to level it off. And we haven't really gone serious off-road yet. Um, we've been off-road, but nothing uh, that you would consider uh, rough terrain. That being said, um, gas mileage is pretty much unaltered. Another really cool thing about this is the adjustable bed size. So you could um, essentially just leave it without any extensions and the bed will be like a full size bed, big enough for two people. But I like to sleep a little bit sprawled out. So we usually just open it up to a queen. The, uh, the bed actually will um, extend out to almost a king size, but we don't use it like that. Also in sleeping uh, arrangements, this little uh, couch thing that I'm sitting on folds out into a bed. Kim likes to sleep on that when she's camping by herself. Another really great feature of this, uh, since we don't have any air conditioning and we don't feel that we need it, is this uh, fan that's above me. It's a max fan and you can either have it blowing out or blowing in, creates a great draft in here. I love it. It's like sleeping with a fan on in the house. Now we have solar on here and uh, we also have uh, the ability to add other solar panels. Um, there is a nice little plug on the outside. It's already comes pre-wired, so it's already there. Uh, that's really nice. We have some other solar panels that we can use, but we haven't really been too far off grid yet to need the additional solar. So easy setup and tear down. Um, this is incredibly easy. It's super light to lift the uh, top up. Um, if you wanna see uh, an old lady do it, 
Uh, we have other videos of Kim opening and uh, tearing down the whole setup. Another great feature that we have is the lighting. Uh, inside the camper, we have four strips and they're touch. All you have to do is just barely touch them, no switches to activate, and they're dimmable which makes it really nice when it's dark out and all you really want is just enough light in here to make sure you don't fall down. Um, we have outside lights that are really good. We have a spotlight basically on the side that will light up our whole camp. And we have what we call the porch light. It's amber and it keeps the bugs to a minimum at the back door. So on our camper, what we received uh, is a second battery, deep cycle battery. So we have two. Um, with the solar charging and um, shore power charging and the charging from driving the vehicle, we have enough battery power to last, you know, the two of us, even if there was no sun out, probably four days, no problem. Possibly down the road, one of the uh, next, I guess, upgrades that we would do would possibly be lithium batteries, but we're not full timers. So I don't feel that we need that at this point. Inside the camper, we have a display that will tell us all we need to know about our solar uh, push button. And it's super easy to uh, manipulate. Um, I still have to do a lot of lot more research on um, the solar applications that we need to use. Uh, we also have inside, um, when we're hooked to shore power, we have two 110 outlets, which for us is enough. Maybe we could use one more, but you know, when you're camping, what all do you need to plug in? You know, ours is, we need our coffee maker. Uh, we also have um, a 12 volt receptacle, you know, like a cigarette lighter in a car um, for you young people. Uh, you probably don't know what that is. Anyway, uh, we have that. We have two uh, USB charging ports and we have the ability to check our battery and our um, water tanks to see what the levels are just by the push of a button from the inside. That is really good to have. Okay, now let's start talking a little bit about the cons. I don't have a whole lot but there are some things that could be addressed. Uh, number one for us is the amount of storage. Um, at first we thought, oh, this was great. There's so much storage in here. We'll never be able to fill it all up. Well, guess what? We needed more storage and we needed it organized. So I had to build some shelving units behind me here. And the shelving units have helped out a lot keeps everything from rolling around. Uh, we used to just stuff everything right behind this seat. And um, then you had to just try to figure out, you know, what all is back there and pull everything out um, to get to whatever's on the bottom. Now we don't have to do that. Another con is the truck is my daily driver. So whenever we wanna go uh, somewhere, go camping, um, now I have to uh, pull the camper out of the garage and then, uh, you know, raise up everything and then back the truck underneath and you know, hook everything up. It is, it doesn't take that long, but it is kind of a pain in the butt. The pro for this though, is I can still use my truck as a truck, you know, when the camper's not on. The con is, you know, the install and removal of the camper. With the install and removal of the camper, uh, we have a sloped driveway. So it does get a little sketchy every now and again when we're trying to uh, put the camper um, back in the garage or take it out from the garage. Uh, the slope kind of makes everything move a little bit faster than what you want. But that's not a, a ding against the four wheel camper. That's a ding against my driveway and the contractor that built the house. Another issue I have is gray water. When you use the sink, um, you have an outlet on the outside of the camper that if you don't hook a hose to it, then the gray water is just gonna go down the side of the bed of the truck. 
and then just make a mess. Um, what we chose to do is we have a hose and then we have a gray water tank receptacle that we store the gray water in. Um, there's enough room in that little tank to do like dishes, but other than that, you're constantly emptying it. Big Con, we don't have an awning. Um, I have one, but I haven't installed it yet. Uh, I'm gonna have to get with Four Wheel Camper to find out exactly where all of the uh, studs are basically in the wall so that I can screw it in. But we don't have one right now and we didn't order with the camper. So we don't have a toilet in here. That really stinks when it's cold out. Well, it really stinks if you use a bucket inside the camper also. But when we go to campgrounds, we just use all the facilities there. Um, me being a man, you know, the world is my toilet anyway, so it's not really a big issue for me. But for Kim, it is an issue. And I don't know if in the future we will get a composting toilet or something, but going back to the storage, where are you gonna put it? What we currently use is a bucket with a toilet seat on it and a bag that goes into the bucket. And then we have this gel that we put inside the bag. So I know it's kind of gross. You don't want to hear that, but it's the reality of camping. So I don't have a backup camera anymore when I take the tailgate off the truck. Um, I guess it's an easy fix. I can get some aftermarket thing to put on here. I uh, just haven't done it yet. So I'm still considering this a con. Okay, as for the thermal barrier and the furnace below 32 degrees, I have not experienced the cold in the camper yet. So I'm gonna let Kim come down and she will explain uh, why this is a con. You can sit here with me. You sit, you sit with me. <laughs> okay, so um, I recently went camping during the Siberian Express that rolled through and uh, went to South Carolina and it got below freezing. I think it was 22 degrees. So all we had was the thermal barrier pack up and uh, the first night I was gonna sleep up in the pop-up area and there was um, a pretty good radiation coming off of the vinyl and the thermal pack, probably a good six to eight inches of just the, the cold. And um, I'm really sensitive. If I get cold, I'm done. So um, I ended up coming down here and sleeping on on the the bed for the pull out here and uh, I was pretty comfortable had the furnace and I actually used a plug-in heater um, and it, it worked really well for me that way uh, the camper actually stayed in essence about 65 degrees is where I had it um, but I would say up into the the camper sleep area itself it was it felt like below freezing to me um, but above 32 degrees it was pretty comfortable to sleep up there, um, but like I said, I'm pretty sensitive. And one of the issues that I had with the furnace is that below 32 degrees, it would kick off and then it would start blowing cold air. And um, I know there is a fix to that. I think some people have made some comments on some four wheel camper sites that I've seen, but for the most part, uh, that was pretty annoying having cold a cold breeze blowing around in here. So I particularly just went to um, the plug-in electric heater, so. Well, there you have it. That is our pros and cons and our brutally honest review. There's some things that need to be changed, some things that we can do to fix uh, some of our cons, our annoyances. Um, but overall, the four-wheel camper, I mean, this thing's great. I love every bit of it. What about you? Yeah, I can't wait. We're, we we would like to take a long trip um, and you know be gone for a week, two weeks, three weeks, and someday maybe even full time. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but uh, we look forward to seeing you down the road.